Sabbath School builds faith and practice through the daily study of the Holy Scripture. Welcome to the Sabbath School lessons in the New Jersey Territory. Well, hello and uh, greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, it is indeed another privilege uh, for us to come together as we continue to uh, study uh, this very important lesson of uh, the end time dealing with uh, the cosmic conflict and the three angels messages and tonight or today uh, we have uh, another um, uh, interesting uh, lesson that we need to cover and so with me I have uh, my esteemed panel that have been doing a, a wonderful job in expanding and explaining uh, our lesson uh, for this quarter. And so uh, let me introduce them to you. If this is your first time, I have uh, with me uh, Pastor Buzi. Pastor Buzi, can you uh, introduce yourself to, uh, to our audience? Good evening. My name is uh, Pastor Marie Buzi, and uh, I am an elder at the Collingwood Park Church. All right, thank you. And uh, we also have uh, Pastor Peggy, as we call her. Hi, I am Pastor Peggy Philosense, and I am the Associate Pastor of Maranatha Haitian Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Newark, New Jersey. Thank you so much. And uh, Pastor Jordanico. Hi, I'm Pastor Fortunato Jordanico. I am the pastor of Tom's River, Heightstown, and Browns Mills Church. Thank you so much. And I am Pastor Sterling at the Academy Church in uh, Late Nelson Adventist Academy. And so before we uh, begin, uh, we're going to have a word of prayer. And uh, Pastor Peggy, can you lead us in prayer, please? Yes, let us pray. Tony Father, we thank you so much for being with us throughout this week so far, Lord. We ask that you please be with our lesson study review tonight. We ask that you allow it to Edify those who are listening to it or hearing the word for the first time, Lord. And please send your Holy Spirit to guide us. Give us the sermon of your word so that we can explain it in a way that is clear for all those who need to hear it, Lord. We thank you again for your word. We thank you for the prophecy. We thank you for all the information you've given us in preparation for your second coming, Lord. Let us apply it to our lives and let us always remember the truth in your word and your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So we are down to the um, second to last uh, 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 lesson for this quarter. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are dealing with this week, the seal, the seal of God and the mark of the beast, part two. The seal of God and the mark of the beast, part two. So uh, here we have two different things here, um, the seal of God and the mark of the, the beast. So let's look at our um, uh, memory verse uh, for, for this week. If someone can read uh, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. Revelation 13 and verse 10. Revelation 13 verse 10, he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. All right. Um, what is this verse telling? What, what do we get from this verse? Anybody? What, 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 why do you think that's uh, important to be our anchor text here for this week? It almost sounds like an eye for an eye. <laughs> indeed. indeed. It does. Sounds like it's uh, justice um, being served. Mm -hmm. Justice being served, and, and that is that is really the point here, uh, because as we began this um, this quarter, uh, we talk about uh, cosmic conflict, right? The the great uh, controversy between good and evil, between God and Satan, mm -hmm. and Satan is trying to say that um, God is unfair, uh, God is unjust, and he he gathered all those people on his side. And uh, in order for him to to really uh, win over people, he's not he's not playing the game fair, right? So uh, he will 
Satan is the one who who will uh, kill to get honor, right? He kill uh, to get to people to worship him. But God is like, um, I'm going to give you freedom, right? Mm. Freedom to worship. Uh, if you want to worship me, that's mm. good and nice. If you don't want to worship me, I'm not going to force you mm -hmm. because um, freedom and love uh, go together. You can't have love without freedom of choice. Uh, and so now, basically what is saying here, uh, those who kill by this word will die by this word. And that's going to be the end result of um, of what's going to going to uh, going to happen. All right. So let's leave, let's let's uh, the seal of God. Right. So why do we need? What is the purpose of a seal? Um, why do we have uh, a seal? And what is this? Uh, what is this seal all about? So we we know that the the seal. So many, uh, when you graduate from college or uh, even high school, you get a diploma, right? Mm -hmm. And on the diploma, or even your transcript, you know, you have, you can send your, your any colleges will need your official transcript. Now you can go online and maybe see your own grades and your transcript and so on. Uh, but you can send that to, 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 to colleges, right? They wouldn't accept that because it does not have what? The seal. It doesn't have the seal, <laughs> mm -hmm. it doesn't have the seal of the college. So what is the purpose of the seal from the college? It represents uh, the authority of the place where it came from. Mm -hmm. It represents the person who signs it, uh, who the person is, the title, the authority. And um, what else? <laughs> the confirmation, confirmation that you yes. as that person have graduated who successfully passed, you know, so it yeah. shows that confirmation. It right. also shows, yes, um, it also shows authenticity because um, usually mm -hmm. uh, like Kings royalty, they would have a seal placed on the letter on the envelope. And when the seal is still intact, then they know nothing has been tampered with inside. Mm -hmm. And yeah. territories, territories too, where it came from. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and where it's where it's from. Indeed, indeed. So, 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 what 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 you're saying there? Uh, you know, I, I can divide it into three different um, sections, right? So the seal shows ownership, right? So this comes from a particular university, and it belongs to you know the students. So ownership. Uh, also, um, a level of protection that uh, this belongs to, uh, this person is, is protected um, and, and no one else can claim it. And then, uh, as you mentioned, um, genuineness, that this is not fake. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, these days you can go and buy, buy anything on the internet. You can buy a degree, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. You can buy uh, almost anything, but but the seal uh, shows genuineness because there is uh, counterfeit stuff out there, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's difficult to uh, to determine which is genuine and which is counterfeit. Um, but we have this ownership imply in 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 the seal, so. Let's look at uh, a couple of verses here that uh, shows some sort of ownership, protection, and, and, and genuineness. So we're going to look first at the Old Testament. Um, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12. Right, so we're going to read verse 12 and then verse 19 and then verse 20. All right. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, it says, Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. And then All right, so, so oh, before right. you go to the next one, right? So uh, that they may know, so that's, that represents kind of ownership, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I am their God and, 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 and uh, they are my people. So the, the Sabbath then comes as a sign of, uh, 
of ownership. That, that's that's very interesting uh, at that point. So you can read 19 and 20. It says, I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes, keep my judgments, and do them. Follow my Sabbaths, and they will be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. Mm. All right. So, so, so this sign, uh, God is saying, you know, I want my Sabbath to be a sign. But why, why the Sabbath? Why not um, do not take the name of the Lord in, in vain? Or, or why not uh, one of the other commandments? Um, why, why the Sabbath? What, what's so special about the Sabbath? I believe that uh, the Sabbath is the day that the Lord has blessed and he set apart himself. There are two things that he blessed in the, in the Bible. This is the Sabbath day and, and marriage. Uh, so the Sabbath is at uh, stake because it, it represents God's authority, creatorship. Mm -hmm. So Satan doesn't like that. Mm. I, he doesn't I like that. The Sabbath also, I think it, it's, it's the bridge that connects the the ha the first half of the Ten Commandments and the second half of the Ten Commandments. Yeah. The yeah. first half, um, one, two, and three, all deal about your love towards God. And then the second half of the Ten Commandments, um, five through through ten, deals with your love to your neighbor. And then it's interesting that the Sabbath is the only commandment that deals with God and your neighbor. Amen. Mm. <laughs> it encompasses both right, and so right. it's the it's the bridge that connects the two and it, it's very interesting because you have to remember god the creator and you also have to not work and you have to have that rest not only for yourself but also for your fellow man mm -hmm. uh, and you know your neighbor and everything like that so it, it's really cool that it connects the whole ten commandments right there in the middle indeed 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 uh, so, so that connection, I, I'm so happy that the Lord uh, put it as, you know, not only you, but your household and your servants. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Sabbath is for everybody. And the stranger that is within the gates. Within, yeah. right within the gates. And everybody should benefit uh, from the Sabbath. Mm. And so it's not just for the elite, you know, uh, for those who, I can't own a business and say, well, uh, I'm resting on the Sabbath, but you guys, you know, <laughs> money for me, right? <laughs> you know, it, it's it's for um it's for everybody. Man. So so uh it's a sign. And so let's let's look at some references in the Old Testament where a seal was used for uh for ownership. So we're gonna to go to Jeremiah chapter 32, uh verse 10 uh to 15. Well, we don't have to read from. Let's read from. Uh, let's read from uh, verse. So, from verse six, it talks about the Lord came to Jeremiah and he told him to buy a piece of land and so on and so on. Uh, but if we can read, uh, 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 especially verse ten, um, uh, and see what it says here. Jeremiah 32, 10. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. All right. So 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 Jeremiah is an interesting uh, passage of hope because they were enslaved, they, they the land was being desolated and so on and so on. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said to buy the land. And Jeremiah said, Okay, he sealed it. Why did he why did he seal it? He signed it and he sealed it. Sealed it. Uh, you know, they will have this, um, like kingdoms will have a ring that they use, they put it in, in wax and then stamp it on the document. So this seal represents that the land belongs to Jeremiah, right? That this is Jeremiah's land and therefore no one else can come and, and take the land. So that's the purpose of the seal to represent uh, ownership. Uh, let's look at another example of uh, sealing the Old Testament. 
to represent protection. Let's go to Esther. Uh, this is an interesting one. Esther chapter 8. Uh, verse 8 to 10. Esther 10, right? 8 to Esther, 10. Esther 8, 8 to 10. 8, yeah. 8 to 10. Now you must use my authority to write another law. Write a law that you think will save your people. Then mark the letters with my special ring. Any letter that has my name and the mark of my ring on it has the king's authority. Nobody can ever change it. Mm. They called the king's secretaries to come and write the new law. They did that on the 23rd day of the third month. Mordecai told them what to write. They sent the letters to the Jews, the rulers, and the officers in all the regions of the kingdom. There were 127 regions from India as far as Ethiopia. They wrote the letters in the languages that people spoke in each region. They also wrote to the Jews in their own language. Everyone would know what says authority to write the letters. He made a mark on the letters with the king's special ring. Men who rode on the king's fastest horses quickly took the letters everywhere in the kingdom. All right. So do, do, do you see any, any um, comparison here with, uh, with the Sabbath and, and, and that episode in, uh, in Esther? Yes, definitely. Because if we go to, oh, wait, let's go to, uh, to Exodus then. Exodus chapter 20, um, verse 8 to 11. Uh, so because in Esther, the, the seal, uh, once, it, once the king uh, signs it uh, with a seal, it means it's genuine, it's protected, all right? No one can change it uh, because it, it is from the king's um, seal. Uh, and so it's protected there. Um, and then in Exodus chapter 20, uh, verse 8 to 11, uh, we also see uh, uh, a representation of God's uh, seal as um, with uh, the seal that kings, that king use. So let's see, before we read that, uh, if you look at the, the seal of the United States, right? Um, what are the what are the what are the parts for the seal of the United States for the presidential seal of the United States? So you're gonna have uh, the president of the United States, right? So you have the territory that the person uh, is in charge of, right? He's in charge of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, President Joe Biden has nothing to do with uh, uh, with um, Mexico, right, <laughs> or, or, or with Jamaica, uh, because he's not the president of um, of those territories. Uh, so you're going to have that. You're going to have the territory. You're going to have the name of the person, uh, whoever the president is, um, Joe Biden at this point, and then uh, you're going to have the authority of the person. All right. Uh, um, as the president, he is the uh, he carries out the 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 laws or to make sure that the laws of the of the country is honored, and so uh, his his authority is 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 president um, of the United States. Now, what is the what is the number one uh, responsibility of the president? Uh, is to protect right is to protect the people of the united states that is that is his number one responsibility and let's read exodus 20 and we're going to see also that god has his number one uh, responsibility to protect his own people uh, uh as well so uh let's read exodus chapter 20 verse 8 to 11 and let's see if we can identify those uh three different uh criteria uh for uh for a seal Exodus 28 to 11. Yes. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. All right. So, so first we have the name of the seal, right? Who, who, his name is the Lord, your God. That's the name of the seal. He's the one uh, who is he's the one who sealed it. Uh, now, what is his title? Uh, his title is Creator, right? He created, and therefore his territory is um, the heavens and the earth. He created everything and so all of the other commandments are not like that it just says thou shall thou shall thou shall this one is 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 different so god uh somehow put his ownership of uh, of the world into the sabbath commandment mm -hmm. and he started as say i am the lord that brought thee out of the land of egypt uh you know representing uh he owned us by creation and in light of the children of Israel, uh, you know, saving them from, from slavery as, uh, as well. So, um, are we then saying that uh, the Sabbath is the seal? What is, and how are we sealed? Okay, so is the Sabbath the seal or is the Sabbath a sign of the seal? So in other words, if I'm a Sabbath keeper, does it mean that I am sealed? Hmm. That's a good question. Because we could, I mean, we can follow the Sabbath as a ritual, but it doesn't really mean much to us. Um, and I guess that's where it leads to towards the end time of how much it's that action that follows it, you know. Indeed. If you are mm -hmm. truly keeping the Sabbath the way God intended it, and you will, will be sealed, or <laughs> you have been sealed. <laughs> okay. As God intended, that, that's, that's an important point, uh, as God intended. <laughs> so that's like the question, uh, you know, how did he intend it to be, uh, to be sealed? Mm. Uh, so what does the seal, now who does the seal? So let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 13 and 14. And then someone can find Ephesians 4 and verse 30. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Mm. All right. So who seals us? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So, so the Sabbath doesn't seal us, uh, but the Holy Spirit seals us. And, and, and the sealing simply means that uh, we have uh, obtained permanent salvation in Christ. Because mm. right now we know that, you know, you can lose your salvation. Uh, you know, we don't teach one save all we say. Um, but once you are sealed uh, with the Spirit of God, then uh, you, you're being accepted uh, uh, in, into, into God's kingdom. And, and you're sealed, therefore, uh, you're not going back. And, and the sealing, we know, uh, takes place at the, um, at, the, at the end of time, especially before uh, the plagues uh, uh, come upon this, um, upon this earth. So we are, we are guaranteed salvation uh, through the Holy Spirit. Let's read uh, 4 and verse 30. Verse 30 says, do not do anything that will make God's Holy Spirit sad. God gave his Holy Spirit to you to show that you belong to him. As a result, you know that God will make you completely free one day. Mm. Verse 30. Yeah. So that here again, uh, the Holy Spirit, it what does the stealing. 
-hmm. So we, 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 are, we are not to be deceived by the fact that uh, because we are Seventh-day Adventists and, and we go to church on Sabbath, mm -hmm. we are still, right? Uh, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit is in us and the Holy Spirit seals us uh, for, um, for the kingdom of, uh, of God. Uh, it's, it's interesting that the Sabbath is going to be the test. Why? As we mentioned earlier before, uh, God is very much concerned about him being the creator, and Satan doesn't want that at all, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have evolution and, and all of that. Okay, so so what about, so we have the steel of God, and then we have the mark of the beast. Why is it necessary for marking? Why, 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 why marks? Okay, why were people um, uh, why were people mark? What's the purpose of marking somebody? In the time of slavery, they used to mark people. It's like uh, if you have a cow, cow, you you put a step on it, it belongs to you. It's your property. Property. Mm -hmm. You know property. the. I think at the end of time, we will choose uh, which mark, which seal we want to have, whether we want to have that seal or human, somebody else's seal, you know, whether we're going to obey to the Sabbath of God or we're going to obey to another day that other, you know, people just make up as the Sabbath. But we know that the seven days, the Sabbath that God created for us, he, he put uh, his seal on it. He said he... He sanctified it, so this is the one he wants us to get. Indeed. So let's let, let's go to uh, Revelation 14 and verse 9. Revelation 14, verse 9. Yes. All right. And the word of God reads, Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast in his image and receive his mark on his forehead or on his hand. Keep reading? Yeah, keep or reading. Just add it. Yeah, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. All right, so so if we compare the mark of the beast with the seal of God, uh, the mark of the beast can be in your forehead, uh, it can be in your hand. The seal of God is only um, in your forehead, right? Uh, now, what what do you think the difference uh, is? The difference here between um, your forehead and your hand. Because, because you can receive it either two two places uh, for the mark of the beast. I believe the Bible says that either um, God's still you're gonna receive it on your forehead and your hands too. The hands, uh, the forehead is the way you're thinking, your belief. If mm -hmm. you believe the the word of God is true, you follow it, and uh, the hand represents that uh, your action. You're gonna okay. take an action to do it. So we're going to have to make a decision. We're going to have two camps at the end of time uh, of Christians. Some of them will choose to follow God's seal and some will follow the beast's seal, right? So some will follow. So what would make the difference whether or not uh, in terms of the, the, uh, the beast, whether a person uh, receive the mark and when we talk about forehead, uh, let, let's make this clear that we are not talking about there's going to be something on, 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 on your forehead, on your forehead, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We don't believe that it's going to be a physical mark on your body, um, whether a mark is 666 or whatever the case is, we, we don't believe that. So the forehead represents uh, knowledge, right? It's what you believe. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when you receive it in the forehead, uh, in terms of ignorance, you know, is not an excuse sometimes, but sometimes, uh, you have people who, 
uh, genuine believe something, but they believe the wrong thing. Mm. Or they they or they they know better and and they still believe it anyway. So there are those who are there are those who will receive the mark of the beast, uh, believing that whatever the uh, the beast is saying is true. Okay, and and for your hand. Uh, people do things for conveniences. Mm. Right? And, and so I'm going back to, 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 to the aspect of the, of the vaccine that, you know, we spoke about uh, um, earlier, um, last week. Um, there are those who will do things just for convenience. So some people, uh, and there's nothing wrong with this, but I'm just using it as an illustration. Um, some people are determined that they weren't going to take the vaccine, right? Not because it's a mark of the beast or no, not that, but they just didn't want to put in the foreign substance in the body because they figured it was, you know, um, too quickly produced or whatever, not, not well tested. Uh, but as soon as employers say, well, uh, if you want to work here, then you have to have the vaccine. And so for the aspect of economic reasons, um, People took it because they need to feed their families, wherever the case is, right? Uh, so I believe the time will come when we when we come to the mark of the beast and we to the Sabbath. That there are many who are like us who are Sabbath keepers, uh, who may not even believe that Sunday is the Sabbath, but may go along with with the beast because when the Bible says that you may not be able to buy or sell. At that point, for economic reasons, uh, for convenience, they will worship on on Sunday. Uh, so that's the that's the hand part of it. Is they don't believe that is it, it, it is a Sabbath, but uh, in order to feed their children, in order for you know uh, pay their bills, they go along with um, with the beast, and there are those. Who actually believe that the beast is right, and 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 Saturday is the Sabbath, and therefore that those are they that receive it in their forehead. Now, when it comes to the seal of God, we can't serve God by convenience, mm. right? We have to actually believe and actually be convinced that what we are doing is right. Uh, and so that's why the seal of God is 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 in the forehead because it's something that you take to heart, it's something that you actually believe uh, compared to uh, to to the mark um, to the mark of the beast in that sense. All right. So how do we avoid the mark of the beast? I think by being sealed by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> indeed, and it, it is as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really, indeed. Um, you know, sometimes we make salvation complicated, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yes, we do. So it's I, to be sealed by the Spirit. I believe we can keep the Sabbath all we can if we don't have a relationship with God. You don't believe in Jesus that He saves you. You want to be sealed because the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to seal us so that we can resist that temptation to take the mark of the beast. We won't be able to do it on our own, right? Yeah. It will have to come from God. The relationship that we have with him when he seals us, really, that's when we will be able to stand. And I believe the sealing will come before the, the, the mark <laughs> comes, right? Indeed. Um, so we are sealed, uh, and therefore we make our decision uh, for God. So by the Holy Spirit. So how do we get, how do we get there? Uh, and all this has to be getting to know Jesus, right? Uh, so uh, one more text here is Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, because uh, we want to talk about, you know, the positive side of, of this, which is the seal of God. 
how do I get sealed? And uh, the seal is basically being saved. How do I get salvation? And how do I remain saved? Um, in line with, with, with God's principles. So Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's what we have to do. Um, by faith, uh, keep hearing. Uh, and hearing here is not just um, going to church and, 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 and listen to a sermon, uh, but it's about uh, living out the word of God. All right, living out, practically living out the word of God in, um, in, in our lives. And in that sense, by faith, we accept uh, the gift of, uh, of salvation that God has for us. So how concerned then should I be about the mark of the beast? And when I'm hearing things about... Um, you know what the uh, Sunday laws and the Pope is doing. Should I be rejoicing or should I be scared? Hmm. I think it depends where you are. <laughs> rejoicing, you're excited that he's coming soon, but that means that's just hard times, you know. Do we really yeah. want to rejoice about the hard times? But we um I would say that um it increase our hope. Um, in the word and it creates a trust and faith that what God has told us will happen is coming to pass. And so you're like, the word is true. God is true. Like it, it just gives you that confidence and, and belief and hope and excitement that this is exactly what he said. So I can continue to believe in the word because it is coming to pass and he'll be coming soon. And so I guess it's that part, but there's no need to be afraid um, because you know that God has, your, God has um, Jesus has already redeemed us as a salvation. We've been sealed through him. And then once we accept him as Jesus Christ, our savior, we believe in the word, we are applying it to our lives. We're doers of the word at the same time. And so once you have that firm relationship with God, you don't need to be afraid, um, but just and it should increase our hope and faith and trust that Christ is coming soon and everything that he said is actually happening. Yeah, I, I think that's almost a trick question. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Because uh, the, the wicked are being slain and you're saying, like, yeah, we rejoice. But I, um, <laughs> I, I think Ezekiel 9 um, kind of mentions a little bit about the, the seal. In uh, Ezekiel 9, chapter uh, 3, uh, yeah, chapter 9, verses 3 through 6. So I'll just read mm -hmm. verse 4. It says, and the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark. And, you know, the word mark and seal could be used interchangeably uh -huh. and, and sign. So it says, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And so uh, you see the attitude of these people who were sealed are the ones who are crying about what's happening in the world because, you know, it, 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 it's sad of the the state of the world mm -hmm. and so um these people these men they're sealed and they're they're protected by god and uh in verse six it says slay utterly old and young both maids and little children and women but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuaries so um yes there's rejoicing that we we are safe in the lord's hands but at the same time uh you know We'll be looking at all around us and we'll be crying out for all the bad things that's that's happening too so yes there's a reason to rejoice um and there's also a reason to at the same time be sorrowful for what's going on around the world indeed uh so the rejoicing aspect is is knowing that okay um, weeping may joy for a night, but joy comes yes. in the morning, right? Amen. In the morning. And Christ is gonna come uh uh to take us uh to take us home. And then once once we are sealed, then there is no turning back. Uh mm -hmm. there's turning back, and so we remain faithful, uh remain faithful uh to God. 
and and uh, it reminds me as well of the story of the ten virgins, mm. right? Five had oil in their lamps; they had the Holy Spirit, and the other five were foolish. And when they wanted to, you know, the other one were who had the Holy Spirit to share. At that point, nobody could share anything with anyone. Mm. Whatever you know, that's what you're gonna know. Whatever you believe, that's what you're gonna believe at at the end. So we have to make preparation right now so we can have the seal of God, the Holy Spirit with us. Yeah. It's interesting point. in that the all 10 actually had some oil, mm -hmm. but five didn't have enough oil. Mm -hmm. so they weren't prepared. Okay. They had a little mm -hmm. bit and it was, you could say it was burning, but they fell asleep and, you know, actually all fell asleep, but the other five wise, they had enough oil to burn through the night. The others... They, they they ran out of oil. Yeah. Yes, and 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 uh, you know the the oil represents the Holy Spirit. And then mm. in Ephesians chapter four and verse thirty, it talks about and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God yeah. by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Amen. Yeah. And so we have to be careful that uh, as the Spirit speaks to us on a daily basis that we do not grieve the spirit and the spirit, when the spirit leaves us, you know, that's like the empowerment of a sin um, where, because the Holy Spirit is the one that, you know, causes us to ask for, um, for forgiveness. And so we welcome the Holy Spirit in our life. The Holy Spirit is responsible for our sealing and it is the best companion that we could have. And so we got to constantly uh, uh, ask God to give us uh, the Holy Spirit and the seal us for the day of um, of uh, redemption. All right, so our time has uh, slipped by here. Uh, so let's uh, anything that you uh, your takeaway uh, at some point that you want to highlight from um, from the lesson that we may not have covered. Uh, feel free to share uh, at this time. I uh, so one of the points that I had on um, on uh, Monday was the last paragraph says these prophecies are given by a God of incredible love to prepare a people for the coming of Jesus. They are a rebuke to apost apostate religious organizations that have departed from God's word and not necessarily the people in them. Our message is about a system that has deceived millions. Though deceived, these people are much loved by Christ. Hence, we must treat them accordingly. Um, and I love that portion of it, that one, God loves us so much that he prepared us by letting us know in advance how things are going to happen so that we have no excuse. We can prepare ourselves for it accordingly. Um, so everyone has the same message. Everyone receives it. Um, but those who are allowing the Holy Spirit to, to use them, then discern them, then they're able to understand and interpret the messages. But where it's, it's exciting to know that God has given everyone access to the Bible to know what's coming so there's no excuse. But also, I like the fact that the finish off the last sentence is, though these deceive these people are much loved by Christ, hence we must treat them accordingly. Sometimes we're so busy talking about the power that's going to happen, the Roman power and the pagans, and, and that with those who are not part of the remnant church and things like that, that we do not really understand how God's going to work through them. Like Pastor Sterling, you said, those there are those who who don't really understand the Sunday law, the the, um, the Sabbath message, and all that, and so they have been following their cultures, their families for so long, and and it's through that um, the unfortunate, the ignorance of it that they continue on with that, but honestly believe not that they believe in the beast, but they this is what they believe in, and it reminds me of William Miller, it reminds me of Martin Luther, all of those in the past. They made a difference for our Christian church to be where it was. It took time, it took step, but they weren't worshiping on the Sabbath, you know. And but yet, I believe that God will have a place for them. I may be wrong, but they are part of our establishment as Seventh-day Adventists. 
through the transition of that period. And so we need to be mindful of how we present the message mm. because we don't know who God is going to save. Mm. And we're so busy saying the Sabbath and us that we're going to be saved that we are dismissing everyone else. And that is not a Christ-like behavior that we're supposed to have. We're supposed to reflect Christ. And I think the lesson talks about that in the next lesson as well of the character of God is love. And so we are supposed to reflect that whether by sharing the message and the Holy Spirit will convict them. And that's what we're supposed to do, still love them and worship with them and tell them about the message and love and still um, still be, um, because they're, they worship a sun air, so they still love God. God is still working in their lives. They can share testimonies of how God is working in their lives. And so we cannot um, proclaim the judgment without even knowing ourselves, because God knows their heart. So we must be mindful and treat people the same way with love and just share the message and God will work with them accordingly. Amen. The spirit works on their heart, right? Yes. And share the message. Uh, indeed, indeed, good. Uh, sometimes we, we, we become so proud of the, 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 the knowledge that we have, um, but we therefore have to share it in love. Um, yeah. Yes, amen. And, um, just to add to that, it, there's a, sometimes a lot of Adventists are even mistaken saying, uh, you know, Sunday keeping is the mark of the beast. And they're talking about today, right now. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we clearly see that um, if you study through prophecy and even read Ellen White's writings, she says um, in manuscript, uh, one of her manuscripts, 118, 1899, she says, Sunday keeping is not yet the mark of the beast. And it will not be until the decree goes forth, causing men to worship this idle Sabbath. The mm. time will come when this day will be the test, but that time has not come yet. And so it's, it, it's something that's in the future when the death of the decree comes out. And so we, we have to make this distinction. Um, some people will say like, oh, you have the mark of the beast already or whatever. Oh, okay. Some Adventists mm -hmm. may say that uh, talking to you know other Sunday keepers, but th mm -hmm. that's not the case. That's not the case. And um, also, the I think the the best way to really avoid the mark of the beast, right, is to just follow God's commandments. Um, those who are keeping God's commandments and have the faith of Jesus, they are the ones that are sealed, right? And if you're not doing that, then you're not sealed. And if you're not sealed by the Holy Spirit, then that's going to leave you uh, uh, vulnerable in receiving the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And and so um, that's something that we have to think of. And I, I think it, it's really God who it, it's not like, oh, yeah, I keep the Sabbath. So that's why I'm going to be sealed. It's not it's because God is in you and the Holy Spirit working in you is why you keep the Sabbath and mm -hmm. is why you're going to be sealed. And, and and so it's always God is is who is our salvation and our righteousness. And um, it's not that uh what we do in a sense right what we do is just only the fruit of 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 having a, a life dedicated and devoted and submitted to god um i, I just want to end with this psalm 37 verse 37 to 40 it says mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace but the transgressors shall be destroyed together the end of the wicked shall be cut off but the salvation of the righteous is of the lord he is their strength in t the time of trouble and the mm -hmm. Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Amen. And so it, it's not, uh, we are obedient to God to receive mm -hmm. the seal. It's we're sealed. And that's why we, uh, we be can become obedient to God. Amen. Indeed. Amen. Amen. Yes. But suppose what's your final takeaway? Amen. I would say by beholding, we become changed. Um, our defects can prevent us from uh, seeing the Lord and, and enter into the kingdom of God. So we have to hold on fast to Jesus and to his word and, and share with others and love others just like Jesus loves them. So that uh, it's not just us only. We, we're not going to go anywhere by ourselves. We have to take somebody else with us, you know. Amen. And God says, come out of Babylon, my people. God has his people everywhere. Mm. 
So we need to teach, we need to share, we need to love, and we don't, we're not supposed to condemn. Don't tell anybody they're going to receive mark of the beast, this and that. We need to share with them the love of God and the word of God so that they can be saved as well. Amen. Thank you, indeed. And uh, a verse that we've been looking at, uh, Revelation 14, 12, here, the patient, mm -hmm. the saints. Uh -huh. Yeah, those who keep the commandments, mm -hmm. not just the Sabbath, mm -hmm. but the commandments of God mm -hmm. and have the faith of Jesus. Amen. So not, not just the Sabbath, but also have Jesus' faith and keeping all of the commandments. And we can only do that uh, as, as, as Pastor, you said, to the Holy Spirit enabling us to um, equip us to, to keep the commandments uh, of God. And so we pray that uh, we pray that we all will receive the seal of God and that uh, we are sealed through the Spirit. And let us not grieve the Holy Spirit, but we welcome the Holy Spirit in our lives and uh, that will seal us for the day of redemption. And so we pray that uh, you and your family uh, will enjoy that salvation uh, that is offered to the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, until we see you again next time, we pray that you remain faithful. And we know that God will always take care of his people. No need to worry. No need to be fearful. Uh, God says uh, he will never leave us. Neither will he. Uh, forsake us. Amen. Until next time, God bless you and let us continue to study the word of God together. Amen. God bless.